I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this is The Bottle Reloaded. Yes, it is. Uh, we are now on the third part of Jacob's journey to becoming Israel and uh, and well, everything with that. It's pretty exciting. Uh, nothing new is really happening because uh, we recorded both episode one and two within the day. Yeah, a couple hours ago. A so. couple hours ago. Uh, Take a break, chilling. Finalize the merch store, so that's all set up. And uh, yeah, go buy, go buy stuff. There's like two and three dollar things. What you, you're too cheap. You can't we, go buy a we button. Just made you a can't, beer. You can't go buy a button. Sova Clemps. I. You, that's a, like the third time. Anyways, um, <laughs> we have a really cool beer stein and a great mug. You guys yeah. should drink liquids out of it while you brandish our. I'm logo. definitely gonna buy some. Look at these shirts. Look at this mug. I'm most certainly gonna buy a, a mug. That's really. It's a good mug. It's a cool mug. Anyways. Anyway, that's enough of the shameless plug. Let's continue with the story of Jacob. As we last left him, he had married his two wives, <laughs> Leah and Rachel. And first cousins. And uh, they are his first cousins, and they had a fuck-off to have a bunch of different kids with him. Uh, now, we are Their moving vaginas out. must be just blown right out. Oh, I guarantee it. Want the real facts of life? It doesn't matter if you date once a week, once a month, or once a year. Spending just one night with the wrong guy could leave you with a sexually transmitted disease. And if left untreated, some sexually transmitted diseases can leave you infertile. Which means it really wouldn't matter where babies come from, because they couldn't come from you. So protect yourself, and the baby you may want to have someday. So now what's happening, we're going to skim a lot of this because it's a lot of boring things, as the Bible is. Yeah. What happens is Jacob goes to Laban and he says, we're going to split up your flock. Here's what we're going to do. I'll take all the speckled ones. Right. You take all the clean ones. Yeah. And then that's how we'll decipher them. Laban tries to trick him at first by taking out the speckled ones. Yeah. But then Jacob tr- tricks him back by doing some crazy voodoo magical god stuff. Yeah. Honestly, I, that's the best I can describe it. I assume it's how Paul just think natural and artificial selection works. <laughs> he takes like a tree and he's like, I'm gonna cut this tree up and then they're gonna mate in front of the tree and that'll make him have speckles on it. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. That's all you need to but know. Anyways, the point is this makes Laban mad. So Jacob, his two right. wives, their and all, servants, the families, all that stuff, they flee. They flee from Laban's And also household. it gives Jacob some more wealth. So later he flees from him and then Laban goes after him to try and get his yeah daughters back and also he thinks that the he's first chase scene in the bible yeah <laughs> he thinks jacob stole these idols that were in his household because laban apparently is not necessarily jewish he worships other gods yeah they're like uh they they explain them what are they called household gods household they're called gods. household gods and so basically, they're like little, uh, little. I assume golden wooden statues, yes. like kind of a false idol, I guess you could say, if you're a Christian. And then one of the funniest things that happens. So Laban does catch up with them, and he says, "Where are the gods?" And Jacob's like, "I don't know. I don't know where they are," because Jacob legitimately didn't take them. Right. It turns out uh, Rachel had stolen them yeah. because I assumed they were in her house. She right. wanted them. She and believed them. For to be context, gods. Uh, Rachel is uh, Laban's daughter. And- so she hides them in a camel's saddle, sits on it. And then Laban comes into the tent, because they, they're nomadic, right. and says, get up, and essentially, and she so he can search it. And she says, this is verse 35, she says, Rachel said to her father, don't be angry, my lord, I cannot stand up in your presence, I'm having my period. So he searched, but could not find the household gods. That is a direct quote. That's very, I think that's funny. I think it's funny too. It, I, I hope that that was Jewish comedy. I hope so. I because I, a lot of this, uh, if you're not aware, um, a lot of this is like uh, like the Iliad and the Odyssey kind of. It's not when the Jews were writing this, they weren't like, oh, people will think this is exactly what happened 100 percent of the time. They're like stories. They're like they're like fables, and they had their own comedy and their own poetry and stuff sometimes. And this one particularly is funny. Oh no, my daughter's on her period. I'm not gonna make her move. I don't wanna. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, that happens. Uh, he doesn't find the gods because she is sitting on them in the saddle. Um, right. Uh, and he and Jacob make up and just say, okay, we'll make a pact. I don't care anymore. It's good. 
We're bros. Bros again. This section, uh, chapter 32 of Genesis, Jacob prepares to meet Esau. If you'll remember, Jacob tricked Isaac into giving him Esau's inheritance. Esau's the hairy monkey man that has uh, Robin Williams knuckles. Yeah. Right. And he ran away. That's initially why he left his family in the first place, to get away from Esau, because Esau had threatened to kill him. Right. But here in chapter 32, what happens is he hears word that uh, Esau is approaching with 400 men. And he says, essentially, "Uh uh-oh. He's going to come kill me. What am I going to do? So he runs for a while, and then he prays to God, and he's like, God, what am I going to do? So with this prayer from God, he decides, I'll send a bunch of cattle to Esau. Peace offering, and then he doesn't see them for a while, but uh, before we get the conclusion of that, we get a section called Jacob Wrestles with God. Right, it's like this sort of weird, like, out of left field thing. Like, what happens is Jacob kind of goes back across the river. Yeah. And he kind of waits there overnight. And then this dude shows up. Genesis chapter 32, verse 22. That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Just immediately. Yeah. Done, and then a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wretched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. So this is where we first get the name change of Jacob to Israel. This is where <coughs> right. Israel comes from. Yeah, His the name, name is Israel. Israel. Verse 29, Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip, because the socket of the hip was touched near the tendon. Okay, so... Weird reasoning. This is a really weird passage, and it feels like it's just thrown in there. I had a professor that uh, did literary analysis of the Bible. He, as far as context, we don't know much, but as f- like the story's contents, like stuff like... Uh, the touching of the hip, it's kind of like showing God's power. Like, he could just, like, boom, touch you on the hip, now your socket's out of joint. Okay. That's, you know, if I was God, I would obliterate him completely, but whatever. It's um, a good thing you don't have a lot of power. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have drowned everybody, though. Um, And then he renames him, just because, you know, yeah. dudes can do that. Note that he did na- rename him Israel at this point, but he renames him again later. There's a lot of repetition in the Bible. Yeah. And then there's one more thing about the whole, it's almost daybreak, let me go. A lot of people are like, wonder why. Apparently, you're not supposed to be able to look God in the face. You're not supposed to be able to look at him. Like, you'll even notice in the chick tracks that we do, God is always a faceless figure. You can't look at him. Now, he says he looks at him in the face and survived, but if you notice... It's never daytime mm-hmm. and stuff. So a lot of the literary analysis and stuff like that goes into it. And it's just kind of an interesting little artistic thing. I don't know. It's very, literarily, it's kind of a neat little section. Yeah. All right. So on to chapter 33, Jacob meets Esau. Jacob looked up and there was Esau coming with his 400 men. So he divided the children amongst Leah, Rachel, and the two female servants. He put the female servants and their children in front, Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph in the rear. I like this because it shows that the order in which he gives a shit about the children. And it is interesting that uh, Joseph and Rachel are in the back because it is made very evident, especially later, that Joseph is his favorite son because he is mothered by Rachel, who is uh, his favorite wife. The hot one. (laughs) He himself went on ahead and bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother, but Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they wept. Okay, so as you can see, there's going to be a whole almost prodigal son type thing going on. Interesting to use prodigal son in reference to the Bible, <laughs> since that is a Bible story. That's funny. But that's not the point. Well, Essentially, good. all that happens is they make up, and they say, we're good, it's fine, we both yeah. lived our lives, we're older now, we're cool. That's all that happens. But moving down to verse 18, after Jacob came from Paddan Aram, he arrived safely in the city of Shesham in Canaan, and camped within sight of the city. For a hundred pieces of silver, he bought from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, the plot of ground where he pitched his tent. There he set up an altar, Hello. called it El Elohi Israel. El is the God of Israel. Elohi. See, this is the singular version of Elohim. Yep, there you go. 
So, you know, way back in episode one, I believe, it says the gods created the heavens and the earth, or, you know. Which would be Elohim. Which this would is be Elohim. Elohim, and this different. is Elohim. So, a little connection there. Yeah, and again, as we said, people in this time did believe that there were multiple gods. They didn't believe that their god that they believed in was the only god. I cite Balzabub. Okay, <laughs> moving on to the main act. Woo! Chapter 34. Dina and the Sheshemites. This is a good one. Sheshemites. If you like rape. Sheshemites. Now Dina, the daughter of Leah, had born to Jacob, went out to visit the woman of the land. When Sheshem, son of Hamor and Hivite, the ruler of the area, saw her, he took her and raped her. Wow. Yep. Just, uh, you know. Just there. Unfortunate. His heart was drawn to Dina, daughter of Jacob. He loved the young woman and spoke tenderly to her. <laughs> what? <laughs> you can't... What? You can't rape someone and then be like, Hey, baby, I'm gonna make it up to you. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That he raped her. I just... Uh, sorry, I was just double-checking to make sure. That is the same girl, right? Like, he didn't rape yeah. one... The, nope, same same woman. Yeah. Raped her and then it's like, oh, that's... She's sweet. And Shishem... <laughs> Said to his father, Hamor, get me this girl as my wife. As you do when you rape when people. When you rape people, yeah. When Jacob heard that his daughter, Dina, had been defiled, his sons were in the fields with the livestock, so he did nothing about it until they came home. <laughs> Odd commentary on that, but okay. Yep. Then Sheshem's father, Hamor, went out to talk to Jacob. Meanwhile, Jacob's sons had come in from the field as soon as they heard what had happened. They were shocked and furious because Sheshem had done an outrageous thing in Israel by sleeping with Jacob's daughter, a thing that should not be done. Interesting side note, as yeah. when we're talking about translations of the Bible. See, when we read it, there's sometimes little uh, superscripts. This little superscript A is next to an outrageous thing in Israel. Above that, it says, in the footnote, or against... So it says, because Shishem had done an outrageous thing in or against Israel. Right? You can't decide? Right. You're translating a holy book that is the word of God, in your opinion, and you can't even decide if it's in Israel or against Israel? Not only that, but I feel like in the context, against, against? Israel makes more sense. Use your yet, fucking brain, yet you're choosing Bible guy. in Israel as the main one. So I don't, I don't get what they're doing with their lives. Probably stupid shit. This is fucking terrible. Yep, verse 8. But Hamor said to them, My son Shishem has his heart set on your daughter. Uh -huh. <laughs> so much so that he raped the shit out of her. Like yesterday. It's a property crime at best at this yeah. point. Please give her to him as his wife. Don't, don't ask now. <laughs> you already took it, just take it. I mean, if you're gonna do it, I'm fucking, I raped her, but now I'm gonna be kind about it. Yeah. You piece of shit. Intermarry with us. Give us your daughters and take our daughters for yourselves. You can settle among us. The land is open to you. Live in it, trade in it, and acquire property in it. Like our wives and daughters. Then Shishem said to Dina's father and brothers, Let me find favor in your eyes, and I will give you whatever you ask. Make the price for the bride and the gift I am to bring as, a, as great as you like. And I'll pay whatever you ask me. Only give me the young woman as my wife. Can't even give her, can't even say her name. Okay. That, you know, that chick that I stuck my dick in against her will. Yeah, you know, what a piece of shit. Verse 13. Bet you didn't listen to this in Bible study when you were a little kid. Yeah. Anyone who's an ex-Christian. Me. Verse 13. <laughs> because their sister Dina had been defiled, Jacob's son replied deceitfully as they spoke to Shishem and his father Hamor. They said to them, we can't do such a thing. We can't give our sister to a man who is not circumcised. That would, dis <laughs> that would disgrace us. We will enter into an agreement with you on the one condition only, that you become like us and circumcise all your males. <laughs> then they That's funny. Then we will give you our daughters and take your daughters for ourselves. We'll settle among you and become one people with you. But if you will not agree to be circumcised, we will take our sister and go. I like that that's the issue. Not that you were, your dicks have that skin on them. We don't Ew. want it. We don't want your sebum in our women. Ew. Sebum. The proposal seemed good to Hamor and his son Shashem. Right? Oh, whoa. Oh, all, okay. all I gotta do is cut my foreskin off and I can get away with this rape and have her whenever I want her. Cool as beans. property. Cool beans. Cool beans! The young man who was the most honored of all his family lost no time in do- He's the most honored of all their family? <laughs> what? They have a shitty fucking family if the rapist is the best one. Yeah. What did those other guys do? <laughs> oh, what do you do? Oh, I rape people. What? Oh, so you're the most popular one. Yeah, my brother does meth and kills kids with a knife. Mm. 
The young man, who was the most honored of all his family, lost no time in doing what they said because he was delighted with Jacob's daughter. <laughs> so they go, hey, will you circumcise? He goes, yep, sling! Here you go. Throws it at him. Splat. <laughs> So Hamor and his son Shashem went to the gate of their city to speak with the men of their city. These men are friendly towards us, they said. Let them live in our land and trade in it. The land has plenty of room for them. We can marry their daughters, and they can marry ours. <laughs> we can marry oh, their... Oh, I, li- I like to think that they're talking to him like, from a balcony, and everyone's like, Oh, okay, this sounds like a good deal so far. All right. What's, what do yeah. we have to give them? This sounds good. I'm all right. Yeah. But the men will agree to live with us as one people, only on the condition that our males be circumcised as they themselves are. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, buddy. What was the one... There's got to be at least one guy in the audience like, wait wait a minute. Yeah. Do, is there a vote? Can we have a do vote, we have vote? On this? No, we can't. Wait, so do we have to do it ourselves, or... If you can't afford an own circumcision, a circumcision will be provided for you. <laughs> Won't their livestock, their property, and all their other animals become ours? So let us agree to their terms, and they will settle among us. <laughs> okay. All the men who went out of the city gate agreed with Hamar and his son Shishem, and every male in the city were circumcised. I would like to hear the logistics about how you take a city-wide circumcision. Yeah, they didn't have the clamps and everything like they do now, even no. in modern circumcision. So I don't know how they went about circumcising every single person in the city. Right, like, is it systematic, or do you just, like, okay... All at once? Okay, all the A's this week... All the bees next week. Well, no, they all do it the same day, according to... Just one day, just yep. bloody dicks everywhere. Okay, well, you'll see. 25. Three days later, while all of them were still in pain... <laughs> That's fucking great. Two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, Dina's brothers, took their swords and attacked the unsuspecting city, killing every male. So these guys are on dick bed rest because they are <laughs> just got circumcised as adults, and they're like, oh my god, my dick hurts. These two guys go into the city, kill every single male. Two of them? Yep. Good for them. They're oh. badasses. It's like Jason Statham and Bruce Willis just went crazy. <sighs> They put Hamor and his son Shishem to the sword and took Dina from Shishem's house and left. The sons of Jacob came upon the dead bodies and looted the city where their sisters had been Holy defiled. Shit. They seized their flocks and herds and donkeys and everything else of theirs in the city and out in the fields. They carried off all their wealth and all of their women and children, <laughs> taking as plunder everything in their houses. Moral of the story? Don't, don't fuck with fucking Jews. rape. Don't fuck with the Jews. They'll go to your house, they'll kill every man, they'll take all your women, children, livestock, everything. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have brought trouble on me by making me obnoxious to the Canaanites and Perizzites. The people living in this land, we are few in number, and if they join forces against me and attack me, I and my household will be destroyed. Fair enough, he's saying, why did you do this? You shouldn't have done that. Now we look like bad guys, because frankly, that's a terrible thing to do. Right, yeah. And their comeback is the best Bible comeback I've ever heard. But they replied... Should he have treated our sister like a prostitute? End chapter. Yep. That is, you know, I like this story. Yeah. As much rape and murder as in this story. And circumcision. God is so good to these guys. Just yep. think about it. Hey, your sister might get raped, but you're going to be rich. Yeah. Because you have to murder your way through it. Come on. This book is a little silly. Anyways, chapter 35, all that happens, Jacob gets renamed Israel again. Notice that they had been calling him Jacob, even after they renamed him Israel. But now God comes to him again and names him Israel for a second time. This time it sticks. So after that, uh, not a whole lot happens. We have the death of Rachel and Isaac. So Rachel and Isaac die. Rachel dies uh, birthing another child, this one named Benjamin, which will come into play oh, in yeah. the Joseph story. I sure But will. that's the last child she has. She only has two now, Joseph and Benjamin. Uh, and Isaac also dies a couple years later, yep. I believe. And then uh, Esau. Then we uh, have some genealogy descendant. about Esau and his descendants, which is very boring and we're not going to get into it all. Yeah. Then we have something called the rulers of Edom, which is Kind kings. of like genealogy, again. Just but, Israelite kings, it looks like. Yep, so we're going to skip that. And that gets us to th- chapter 37, Joseph's Dreams, which goes into the Joseph story. But we will save that for another time. I hope you uh, enjoyed our little uh, rape story today. Wow. Uh, the Bible's good for a whole bunch of those. There's like a slew of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's going to happen. And if you haven't noticed, we're, we're kind of scooting along here. Um, the, in the first season, we only covered uh, 12 pages. In the first three episodes of season two, we've covered about 10. Yep. So, uh, 
It's going to go a little bit faster. We will get into uh, some of the really, really good stuff. We're going to be talking some Moses eventually. Oh, yeah. That'll oh, be a couple weeks. Yeah. But anyways, what? for anyways. what it is, uh, check us out on Facebook, the Twitter. Uh, the Reddit. The Reddit. Um, uh, go to our merch store. It's at Zazzle.com. Look at these shirts. Look at how good you look in these shirts. Look, look at them. Drink a mug. Well, don't drink a mug. Drink out of a mug. You can drink a mug. You can melt it down you if you have a, some sort of ceramic melting thing. we got thing. some stickers. We want you to buy those stickers. And what we want is for you guys to tag stuff. And when you do it, take a picture of it, put it on our Facebook. Best sticker tag. Get something. And you guys will get something signed by us. It'll be really cool. Yep, so go buy that shit. All the profits end up going back to the show. So if you want it, go ahead. We kind of like them. We're probably going to buy the stuff, to be honest, ourselves. Yeah. Think about that mug. It looks pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we'll put some more stuff up there over time. If you have any ideas for anything you'd like us to put stuff on, because they have a lot of stuff on there yeah. that we can potentially. Put I mean, there's our, everything. The I can make a on. fucking skateboard deck if you yeah. want. Um, if you guys skate and you want a TBR logo on the bottom of your skateboard, fuck it. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, thank you all for listening. Yeah. I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this has been the Bible Reloaded. Science bless. Bye.